I'm gonna come out and say it. I prefer Mac OS. And I know that probably just awoken the controversy beasts, but just because I prefer it doesn't mean I love all of it. Coming from a background of video editing, I've used both Windows and Mac OS professionally for my own creations and just for general use. And neither of them have stopped me from doing any of my tasks. Well, I guess Mac OS does stop me from gaming on it, but I'll get into some of the other cons and more importantly, my hot takes a bit later in this video. But first, what I actually prefer about Mac OS. Like every month I get something on my desktop saying, don't forget to finish setting up your OneDrive I'm never gonna do that. The options are continue or remind me later. Don't remind me. And also the random like advertisement pop-ups like Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Game Bar, or whatever the other ones are. I don't know, I click them away as soon as I can because I don't want to see them. And not having that on Mac just makes it feel a lot more premium and complete. And generally just the menus and the UI and the way Mac looks, I just prefer. It's a little more my style. I'm actually a pretty big fan of just being able to freely move around all of your files and folders, especially when I'm trying to organize a bunch of files. I can kind of just drag them all into one side and it's almost like a, like a whiteboard or bulletin board. And I kind of like that freedom. And something I actually find myself using quite a bit is in the default preview, you can actually just trim your clips right here. Like if there's ever a clip I get for one video that I think could be used in a future one as well, that's what I do. I open the preview, go to the trim, trim the front and then trim the end to like right there. So that way, if I do ever use it in a future video, I mean, it's already cut down and also saves on storage space because it's only the part I need and there's no excess video. And right along with that, another thing that is again, small, but I find super useful is when you hit enter, that's what allows you to rename a file and set on Windows, when you hit enter, it opens it. And of course I'm gonna mention it. I mean, a lot of people do. That paired with the spacebar to preview is super clutch. And I know the spacebar to preview and probably a lot of these other things are plugins that you can get on Windows, sometimes even for free. But I mean, I always just prefer to have things like that native. It's just one less thing to download. I guess it's just a minor inconvenience. And in addition to like the free plugins on Windows, I'm sure there are keyboard shortcuts that are alternatives of this. This just goes into the overall idea that Mac, Windows, even if you use Linux, if you're peculiar like that, like they're all cool, they all work, they all get the job done. It's an operating system. It doesn't care about your feelings. So please don't come outside my house with pitchforks and torches because I have a preference that doesn't align with yours. Because a lot of this stuff, including my next pro here, is biased towards me and my use case which is something like creative software is running smoother on Mac OS. And this, again, could just be my experience, but there's a whole lot less loading wheels, a lot less lagging, a lot less crashing, and a lot less of random weird error messages. I don't know if I've ever seen an error message on a Mac. And again, one of my favorite editing softwares is Final Cut Pro, which is Mac only, which is also just gonna obviously be part of the reason why I like Mac. But I have used DaVinci Resolve quite a bit on Mac and even Premiere Pro briefly. And I actually have a video coming up where I'm gonna try Avid Media Composer, which is like the most popular editing software for Hollywood movies. I've never tried it. That's, it's gonna be brutal, I fear. And I am incredibly grateful I will be trying the new software on a Mac and not Windows because of this one feature that is in Mac OS the help bar. I have no clue why there's no alternative to this in Windows, because this thing is really helpful. <laughs> Pretty much what it does is it allows you to search through all of the settings and it shows you exactly where it is. Like if I wanted to add a transition, all I do is drag my mouse show in workspace transitions, it has this nice little arrow thing pointing exactly at it. Or if I'm like, oh, I want a crossfade right there, a crossfade option T. And it can also bring up help topics like this, or just gives you some information about just how the software works. So if you don't know where something is or what the keyword shortcut is for something, it's really helpful for that. I don't know if it's just me, but whenever I'm working on a video, like editing it or something, that's usually when I actually get my ideas for my other videos. Now, I don't want to get distracted from working, but I also don't want to forget the idea I have. So I want to write it down as quick as possible. And that's where this cool little thing, if you drag your mouse into the corner, you can click it and a note pops up. As you can see, I wrote down my cool new video idea. And once I'm done writing everything I need to, I can close it. And then when I open up my regular notes, you could see it's right there. And then I can simply copy and paste it and sort it with my other ideas. So that might not be useful for everyone. I mean, it only really saves like two clicks, but 
what you can actually do is customize it on all four corners of the device. I say corner, but Mac is very rounded edges. So there's technically no corners on this. If you go to your desktop and dock settings and go to hot corners. So there are a few things you could choose from here, but I think if you want to get the most customizability out of it, you have to download an app, which is inconvenient, but it could be worth it depending on what you need. But I do find the note one pretty useful. And on that note, sneaky little pun there. Since it uses the default Apple Notes app, on my phone, I'm also using it for writing to-do lists. And I'm not gonna harp on it. Everyone knows what's coming. The iPhone, my watch, my AirPods, all Apple devices, they just sync up so perfectly, like for notifications, text messages, and obviously apps like notes. The timing on this could not be better. I'm about to record my voiceover on my desktop because that's where it's all set up. I'm going to open Notion because that's where I write all the notes for my videos. It's not opening. And this stuff happens sometimes. I'm gonna have to go into Task Manager, click End Task, and then open it. It's just extra steps and inconvenient. And since I'm recording this on my iPhone, I'm just gonna airdrop it. It's that easy. Like again, with all the stuff I got, like I'm just chill about it. Like Windows worked for me for years. Mac might work for me a little bit better, but both got the job done. All my pros and cons are really just nitpicks. Something else pretty small that I do prefer on Mac is if you're running something like a timer up at the top here, it actually shows you the time that's left. It's a super, super small niche thing, but I do like it. Never mind the timer sounds. That's my go-to one right there. And then I know this video is only about the software, but the gestures of Mac OS go hand in hand with the trackpad, like literally hand in hand because you move it with your, Never mind. Probably my most used one is the desktop switching. I can go from my video notes to a desktop with a few file folders, to my editing software, to Google Chrome. And I can also swipe up to see all of the desktops here. And I used to kind of think this was gimmicky, but if your desktop's crowded, you can just click anywhere in the empty space and it parts like the Red Sea. And what is also kind of gimmicky, but I do find myself using it sometimes, is if I wanted to move these files into a subfolder, you can hover it right over it. It blinks a few times, it opens, then I can sort it into tech. And then this would probably be cameras because it's camera equipment and you're good. Like that's probably not the most efficient way to move files, but it's just not even an option on Windows and I like my options. A lot of people, I, probably myself even included, we give the vague answer that Apple and Mac OS, it all just works, which is true. But a specific example of that is I just, I haven't had to worry about Bluetooth disconnecting. When I was using Windows full time, probably like once to three times a week, I just heard that doo -doo -doo, like that. <laughs> That was a good impression. The Windows Bluetooth disconnecting sound. I'm like, what just happened there? And I realized my mouse stopped working. So I go to repair, repair failed. I'm like, okay, I'll just remove the device. Remove device failed. What? Then I was like, all right, I'm just gonna restart my computer. I did, nothing happened. The only fix that I found is you have to search for Windows updates. And it wasn't like one of the big updates, it was just like one of the small ones. It took like eight to 10 minutes. I had to restart my computer again. And then magically the Bluetooth is working again. I don't know why that happened. And even with using that same exact mouse on Mac, I've just never had that problem and I've never even had to worry about that happening. I also highly prefer screenshotting on Mac, just being able to drag it immediately into a folder or a text message while it's much clunkier on Windows. And also like I did for parts of this video, using QuickTime for screen recordings is super easy and also high quality. Now I know I said I'll do hot takes later, but I think I gotta pull this one out. I almost prefer Finder. File Explorer is great, but I have pretty much everything I need from it in Finder. You can pin all these folders to the sidebar. You can add new tabs. You can drag the new tabs out and it creates new windows. Of course, there's the search feature. And to be fair, it could just be my PC, but I found Finder to be a little less clunky and maybe a little bit faster, especially paired up with some of the things I already mentioned, like the spacebar to quick preview. And I actually have a video coming out pretty soon about how you can maximize what you get out of a Mac and out of Mac OS. And a lot of the tips actually have to do with Finder and these are things I'm using every single day. So feel free to subscribe if you want to see that. As much as I love it, it was pretty easy to find some cons with Finder. There is a search bar, this is cool. So let's say I wanted to find a clip of my M4 Max MacBook. Now, can someone tell me why by default, it searches my entire Mac and not the folder that I was in? 
the option is right there. It's capable of it. Now, luckily I'm pretty patient when it comes to one click, but File Explorer has a bunch of good search settings where you can really narrow down to get the exact results you want. And something I took a little bit of getting used to was the group by versus the sort by. The group by is right here and it pretty much categorizes different file types or different names of files. Like if I click date created, it fully separates video clips based on that. And if we go over here to sort by and do that by date created, it takes everything in that group and sorts it within it instead of separating it into other groups. Once you get used to it, it's fine. And this is actually a small thing, but it actually bugs me kind of a lot. When I'm transferring footage from an SD card, let's say 30 to 60 clips, I usually drag it onto my desktop to sort it from there. And I usually try to put it on one side of the desktop. Now, when I actually start to transfer it, there's plenty of room for it to fit there, but half of it decides to stay. The other half decides to go wherever it feels most comfortable all over the desktop. I wasn't just suggesting you go there, but I guess these files are free thinkers now. Another thing that gets me cringing is when I'm going to eject an external drive, right under eject is erase. Now I'm sure there's like two steps. You have to click okay or confirm and check a box or something. Now this is a worthy nitpick. Most of the time, I have this MacBook plugged in HDMI with an external monitor. Working with secondary monitors on Mac is just it's just not the same level of quality display. And I think there's apps to fix it, but come on Apple. I shouldn't have to buy your $1,500 display or download a third party app just to get a second monitor looking good. Uh, real convenient, Tim. Now another small one that some people might disagree with me on. In full screen, the entire top menu bar gets blacked out. It looks consistent, especially with the notch. I'll be talking about the notch when I talk about my hot takes in just a minute. But I mean, if you move the mouse up here, there's room for that top menu bar. I don't know why it has to disappear when you're in full screen. I mean, hate me for just wanting to know the time, man. I do have an Apple Watch. I should, I should probably just use that. And I've saved the stupidest con for last. The little battery icon, it never looks the exact percent that it is. Like sometimes I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, I'm on like 25% and I click it and it's like 47%. I mean, there's an incredibly easy fix for that. You just click show percentage and control center and you don't have to, you know, play a little guessing game with it. I prefer to have that off though. I just think it crowds it up a little more. And most of the time I'm plugged in anyway, so it actually is not a big deal at all. <sighs> just needed some water because other than my preference for finder, I do have some other hot takes. The first one is the notch. I don't care. Like, does it need to be that big? Does it need to be there at all? Like, probably not. Something else that's just never bothered me are the little animations, things like the dock animating in and out, or like the little transition when you're switching desktops or even like the minimizing. I do think this one is understandable to hate. It should be a menu option to turn them off instead of needing to type a line of code into terminal. But for me, like I said, I'm patient when it comes to one second things. And I guess on the same page of minimizing things, I actually don't mind these smaller full screen buttons. Now, are they harder to click than Windows ones? Yes. Do I prefer Windows ones? Yes. But has my mouse accuracy from playing video games paid off and it makes this a non-issue for me? Also, yes. But you won't be playing a lot of video games on a Mac. And I actually think that's a good thing. I don't even think that's a hot take. I think that's more of like a lukewarm take. Now I am lucky enough to still have a Windows desktop where I can play all the games I want on it. So it is nice to have a separate machine where there are less distractions. So yeah, I do prefer Mac, but you definitely won't catch me defending a mere operating system or taking someone else's preference personally. I'm above the age of 11. There are plenty of reasons for people not to use Mac just based on their use case. So if you have any thoughts, feel free to let me know below. And if you want more tech content, you can also feel free to like or subscribe. But thank you for watching.